The batteries are really low and we want to charge them right now. And it keeps on only discharging. So that's horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Solark. So I go in there. Like, what am I doing wrong here? So I go in, I do time of use, everything's set up onto charge. I want to charge at 9 kilowatts. I don't know what the battery voltage, how that would change things. And it keeps on discharging, like, it's set to charge, but it's discharging. Like, why would you do that? Okay, let's stop. Is there like a command? Should you wait a certain amount of time for the command? I've tried turning it off and on again. Yeah. Start there. Start there. Um, there's like no other menu. Like this is the only menu. Okay, so I figured it out. Solar maybe maybe it's okay, but um, so what I had to do is I had to go into battery setup to charge, and then I had to enable grid charge because I wanted to charge from the grid. That makes sense. So, that's good. When I went to grid setup, I thought I had to do time of use <clears throat> and set this to charge, um, but I turned that off and then it started charging, so now I'm happy. I want to get these batteries charged up to 100% SSC um, so the BMS can calibrate um, and then we can start having a good system here. And, and so, how much how much time and how much are you pulling right now? For? Yeah, good question. So we have, we're, um, we're charging at eight kilowatts right now. Um, this is 20 kilowatt hours. Probably came in at about 30% SSC. So probably have two and a half hours to go. Yeah, and it's already getting late tonight. Um, so we'll keep on charging. Um, once um, the cells get up to like, if one cell gets to 3.6 volts, we're like pretty close to being full. And I don't know how out of balance these cells are. Um, and we're at like max cell voltage is 3.4. <clears throat> so we're getting there. I know. So let's see what time is it. It's 10 o'clock. Let's check in in an hour or two. Here's the deal, I'm really tired. We stayed up late and got a lot done but didn't finish. So I'm gonna let you know where we're at, but I have to head to an airport and fly back to Michigan. So this is where we're at. Um, we were charging the batteries kind of all night and because it's such a large capacity battery bank, it took forever. Um, so it's still charging right now, too. I just turned it on. Um, <clears throat> but essentially the BMS opened up the contactors because there's a high cell fault. Because um, the cells are really out of balance right now. So, um, need to get the cells balanced. <clears throat> get them close together. So we don't have a high cell fault. Uh... So that should be interesting. It might take a long time for them to balance. But the battery bank here is looking good. So, so I've set the parameters on the BMS on kind of the safety parameters. And <clears throat> I need to make them wide enough where the contactors don't open. I need to make them tighter on the inverter. So the BMS rarely would ever open contactors, only like really in an unsafe condition. <clears throat> so, we need to do some changes in here. Oh man, I am tired. Um, I need to head to the airport and we didn't quite finish. We have the whole backup panel to do. Um, here's where we're at. I think we have a few circuits in. The AC, solar PV, and another one. Uh, Nate's going to stay longer with Barry and work on that.
that's as far as I can take it. At least the battery's set up and working and able to charge and discharge. Pretty morning here. Nate is doing the final wiring from the main service to the uh, inverter and new sub panel in the garage. We had to isolate each wire so we know which one is. We have different numbers on them that correspond so we're not looking up uh, the wrong circuits and the wrong breakers. All the breakers for the critical load panel are all in place. Have a couple of CTs here for monitoring. Everything runs into the gutter box. Some of it's running all the way back to the house. Some of it is running into the inverter. So here at the critical load panel we have everything on except the solar. We did a test last night where we turned off the grid power and uh, turned off the solar breaker, turned on the hot tub uh, heater. I had uh, put new water in it and got that temperature last night uh, running strictly on batteries with just some regular plug loads and light loads in the house. And we went from uh, 52.5 volts last night to 51.9 volts this morning. Um, and the hot tub jumped from 75 degrees to 95 degrees. So not so bad. And right now I'm about to throw the solar breaker and boom, nothing happened. Anyway, all is well. Lengthening the circuits from the main panel to the new sub panel in the garage using these waterproof wire nuts, um, bundling, you know, neutrals, trying to get it clean in here. If we've done a test fit, the dead front will go on. One thing we realized though, you know, these things being punky as they are, we're probably going to upgrade to the Polaris lugs for a cleaner, cleaner look in there. Currently the grid main breaker is off. These, pit, these breakers are not actually in use at all, so in the event of wanting to put stuff as it was, we can just disconnect, reuse these breakers. Uh, we have the 100 amp grid sense breaker coming from the inverter. That's really the only thing plugged in right now. Everything else is being pulled through the pipe. So back in the garage here, inverter is running off the batteries. Solar is cranking out there on the ground mount. If you look at the screen here, you can see that the house loads are zeroed out. Battery is being charged by PV right now. Um, we've landed the PV breaker here in the uh, new backup load panel. Right now with the grid being out, but grid forming from the batteries, the PV is seeing a good 120-240 signal and is supplying power back here. You notice these two wires hanging here. This uh, this one labeled here is never made it to that side. It got pulled too far. So this is a derelict wire we have to manage. This extra white here, we have both ends sticking out of the panels. We're, we're gonna leave it in here for a continuity tester for future, future reference if we need to. So this has been a great experience. Um, having taken a look at what uh, the market has available as far as uh, Tesla batteries, LG Chem, that kind of a thing. Finding a reputable installer that can actually perform. Um, I can't imagine actually having done this any other way now. So Joe O'Connor um, came up with this idea and, uh, and built the battery system basically. Flew out from Michigan. Um, good friend uh, John Humphrey came out from Brooklyn, spent the weekend here. And, uh, and then my dear buddy Nate has been here for days and days and days. Um, and uh, Ain't no way this would have all happened, uh, any of this would have happened without, uh, without these three great friends uh, with great brains pulling this off. So very pleased, very stoked. Big part of my resiliency plan is now in place. It's great to see we can actually even include the hot tub in all of this. Who knew? Woo. So very, very happy. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. This is just a quick look at all of the items that went into making this happen. Connectors, bushings, 
tons and tons of wire. I think we wound up at 1,400 feet of wire. Breakers, get yourself one of these with the fiberglass uh, tip on it. It'll make all the difference in the world. Uh, make sure you got a good set of power tools and all kinds of snips and scissors and and uh, clamps and headphone earphones. Uh, had to do a little hammering into cement. That helped a lot. And uh, luckily we had a nice area to lay out for all the different bits and everything else we used. Uh, had a nice vacuum cleaner that came in handy. And anyway, I've got a little bit of a project in my hands just to get this cleaned up. But uh, all's well good.